everybody. Welcome back. It has been, wow, a very long time since I've streamed. Um, I uh, was finishing up my master's degree, uh, and I got it, so go me. Um, and I was also uh, moving. I moved back to New Hampshire, so here I am. Uh, we're going to play a nice little game today. It's called Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. Uh, write poems for your crush and experience the terror of school romance. It sounds lovely. I'm sure it's going to be nothing but a heartwarming trip. Uh, it's going to be... All right, this looks like a real cute game. I don't know what that was about disturbing content. I'm sure it's fine. We don't need to worry about that at all. Very excited to meet my true love uh, through Anime Girls, of course. The most reliable way <clears throat> to meet uh, your girlfriend. Uh, somebody with a big pillow told me that one. Yeah, that sounds like me. That's not true. Nani? You told me you would join a club this year. D did I? I'm sure it's possible that I did in one of our many conversations where I dismissively go along with whatever she's going on about. That does sound like me. Theori likes to worry a little too much about me when I'm perfectly content just getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. Also sounds like me. This is just me. Clubs. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Well, that's a solid club. Hey, I've I've thought about joining an anime club before. Uh, I didn't a ultimately do it. I, di I was part of the anime club very briefly, I think once in um, high school, but only because my crush was there, and she shot me with a Nerf gun, so that should tell you how well that went. Hello? Sayori? Sayori must have come into the classroom while I was spacing out. Also sounds like me. This character is really me. This is, this is creepy. Good thing nothing else creepy is going to happen in this game, right, everybody? Right? Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. <clears throat> I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Oh, that's great. I'm sure that won't be relevant to your food. Thanks, uh, Team Salvato, for your comment, Just Monica. I don't know what that means, but I presume you're a big fan of Monica. I hope this isn't too overwhelming, overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it? Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. Sorry, told, told you... Uh, Sayori told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps their manga collection in the club from. <laughs> My Sharona. Ooh, that's a really fucked up song if you look at the lyrics. Anyway, Natsuki finds yourself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature! There we go, let's go. Well, let's read it then. Uh, hole in a wall, or hole in wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the, spa the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas already scorched with a permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It's too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of white, infinite. A uh, hole of infinite choices. I realized that now that I wasn't looking in, I was looking out, and he, on the other side, was looking in. Ah, that's deep. Dear sunshine, the way you go through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me, kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever, but I'm not bad. Uh, mad. I want breakfast. It's a good poem. I like that. Uh, ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green blue of the future. The hue of the future, excuse me. Sorry, I can't read in cursive very well. I bathe. Calm, breathing, air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers, I flicker back. I think that's good. Well, it's about what I expect from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me. It's not like I said it was bad. It just didn't evoke any... 
<laughs> that's like the ultimate insult to any kind of art that it didn't evoke any emotions. That's worse than being bad because at least if it's bad, it evokes some emotions. Like being boring is worse than being bad. So basically, it's just not cute enough for your taste. If you want to get smacked, I'll pass. Sigh. Well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can climb. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. I don't think this is a very good poem. I gotta be real. Yeah, I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing set. I am like, it's fine for a poem to be about simple things, you know. Um, I don't personally find that poem very good. I think it's the ending, but that's that's about it. I don't really think that's a very like, satisfying ending. It's, it, I don't know, it's, it's charming, I guess. I don't know. That's like the nicest thing I can say about it. Anyway, so people, <laughs> this is not my stream to fucking professionally criticize poetry, by the way. We are playing video games. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Oh, well, that's a, that's a good meaning. See, that that recontextualizes the poem for me. That makes a lot, that makes, that makes it a bit better. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. Yeah, but then I, I don't know, it just felt a little too flat for me, but... Uh, it helps bring up a feeling in the last line. So you did, I guess, more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. Oof. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Yeah, guess not. Decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care, care how old everyone is. But if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take home. Well, I do have a couple suggestions. <laughs> this isn't going to go well. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Sayori liked it. And Dory did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon. Unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring. Which I haven't yet. Hmm. And Dory liked my poem too, you know. They even told me they were impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh? eh? Th that's not what I... You, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Dory appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. Huh? And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? <laughs> no. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, um, is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I wasn't the one who's... Whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Dory started showing up. N Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little. This doesn't involve you. I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Dory, she, she's trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. She'd get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective. And this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Actually, I think the forcing your reader to help to figure it out is more fun. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and meanings the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only unnecessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Dory? Um, well... How did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing. But whomever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So, of course, that's going to be... Natsuki, you're right that I liked your poem. See? Wait... That's not an excuse for you to be so mean. You shouldn't pick a fight just because someone's opinion is different. That's not what happened at all. Yuri wouldn't even take my poem seriously. Hmm, I understand. Yuri, eh? You're a seriously talented writer. It's no secret that I was impressed. Well, that's... But here's the thing. No matter how simple or refined someone's writing style is, they're still putting feelings into it and, becoming something, and it becomes something really personal. 
That's why Natsuki felt threatened when you said her poem was cute. I... I see. I didn't notice that. Uh, I'm sorry. But Natsuki, you took it way too far. Yuri means well. If you just told her how you felt, then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. Are you kidding? That's exactly what I did. It was her that... Natsuki, I think that's enough. You both said some things that you didn't mean. Yuri apologized. Don't you think you should too? Mm. Natsuki clenched her fist. fist. In the end, nobody has taken her side. She's trapped at this point, being defiant only because she can't handle the pressure. I end up even feeling bad for her. Eh, no, I don't. Um, sometimes when I'm hurt, it helps to take a walk and clear my head. Don't worry, does she, she doesn't need to. You know what? I'm going to do that. It'll spare me from having to look at all your faces right now. Without warning, Natsuki snatches her own poem up from the desk and storms out. On her way out, she crumples up the poem with her hands and throws it in the trash. Natsuki? She really didn't need to do that. I look across the room. Yuri has her chin buried in her hands while she stares down at her desk. I gingerly approach her and sit in the ad adjacent chair. Sigh. Everything all right? I'm so embarrassed. I can't believe I acted like that. You probably hate me now. No, Yuri. How could anyone not have gotten frustrated after being treated like that? You handled it as well as anyone could. I don't think any less of you. Well, all right, I believe you. Thanks, Tori. You're too kind. I'm thankful to have you part of this club now. Er, it's nothing. One more thing. Um, that one thing that Natsuki said about, you know, I would never do anything so shameful. So, eh? Uh, what thing did Natsuki say? <laughs> um, well, never mind that. I I'm gonna go make us some tea. Ah, good idea. Make enough for more than one person, okay? Y yeah. Okay, everyone. Now I have a better idea of who Yuri is. That was, that was a very helpful section. Comprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you. Uh, all right. Open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulders as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. I get that feeling too when uh, Kim and I read together. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry I was just... Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> here, here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, uh, I, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a bit, our shoulders are almost touching. I'm surprised they haven't made this into an anime. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and her forefinger. Ah, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. See if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face. And she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got distracted for a second. Glance over at Yuri's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not used as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. So nice. Probably the least I could do. Since you've been so patient with me. Y y yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page for me. So I turn it on my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. This is very cute. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways, but she also second-guesses all the things that she says and does, like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like I can see into your head or anything, but they're kind of reminiscent of you, of some of your mannerisms. I, I see. Yuri remained silent for a moment. But Dory, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Uh, that's so embarrassing that you think that. W wait, I didn't mean in a bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know that you were self-conscious about that. I guess I more meant that it's kind of cute. Ah, ah. <laughs> what are you saying all of a sudden? Okay, everyone. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We may not have enough time if we wait too long. Ah. Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that alright, Yuri? You look kind of down. 
I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, it's not. It's fine. Your releases her band from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. All right. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Um, I, I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. Sorry, just catching up with notifications. All right. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. All right. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. All right. Let's show it to Monica first. She's the president, and then Yuri, and then Sayori, and then Natsuki. Hi again, Dory. How's the writing going? All right, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad, I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Ha, <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. All right, great job, Dory. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's the easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way it always counts when I put in some effort. Also like me. I'm going to make a fucking... When I do the highlights for this, because I know I'm going to do highlights for this, uh, it's definitely... The first highlights are going to be like... Um, are going to be like uh, all the times I say, Oh, that's me. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors, flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue, an endless cacophony of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent... Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Oh, that's cool. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. What? An endless poem of meaningless. Load. Load me? Load me? Hey, okay. yeah. I do. Fits with you. Oh, that's right. This is the part I don't like about her writing. All right. The raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilt guild sea snack. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as an ex as a unordinary human. In in ordinary person? I don't know. Sure. I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My subconscious, well aware of the consequences, well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. The bread, my hungry curiosity, the raccoon, an image, an urge. I'm not sure what that's. I think it says urge. The the moon increments its phase and reflects that much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry, and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A slish of, a rush of blood. Classic um, Pavlovian conditioning. I slice the bread, and I feed myself again. All right, bottles. Ooh, it's a long one. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. Wow. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like bundles of kittens. Like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly. But there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottles all in a row. My collections make me lots of friends. Each bottle of starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper, my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done. I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other. Holding them out to each other, each and every friend. Each and every bottle. 
but every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. And spider. Amy likes spider. Sorry, I don't know why the fuck I struggled so much with that. Kept thinking it said army. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Ickly. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Hey, you know what? Hot take? Spiders are good, actually. They eat flies. You should be nice to spiders. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her sing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time I hurt my leg really bad. Amy held me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. What, does she touch spiders like every single second of the day? What the fuck? That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. Oh, I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers, and I'm going to tell everyone. Natsuki sucks. I'm sorry. She sucks. I really don't like Natsuki at this point. I was like vaguely disliking her at first, but this poem has made me really not like her as a character. <laughs> not that she's a badly written character, but I mean like her personality. I just, I really dislike this kind of person. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I don't really, I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies, analogies, and it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like, anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Oh, okay. Alright, so she's trying to make a, po a point about ignorant jerks. She's not herself talking about... See, I thought she was talking about a girl named Amy. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about, uh, it's, it's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. Uh, Yuri wrote about that too. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they make fun of you or think less of you. I have that with pro wrestling. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares about what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it, does, and it makes them happy? I think people really need to respect others for liking weird things. Okay, well, hey, never mind. I take back what I said about Nazi. See, I thought... I thought she was talking from her perspective about a girl in school named Amy who she didn't like because she didn't... And because we've already seen Natsuki be kind of a jerk to people before, that seemed kind of within her character, even if it was a little extreme. So, anyway, whatever. Good. I'm glad that it's, that it's not about her. I think people really need to respect other people for liking weird things. Huh, that's funny. Yuri wrote about something similar today. Huh? Did you say Yuri? Yeah. She said her poem was about an unusual hobby of hers. I didn't really get it, but she said something similar to you. That people shouldn't make each other feel insecure about those things. Really? Well... I mean, Yuri's pretty weird, so I wouldn't doubt that she has some weird hobbies. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, it's not like I, I would judge her or anything. Natsuki has trouble finding words. I, I guess I should try not to be so mean to her. And she feels insecure about her weird behaviors and stuff. I mean, I always hate when people... Hate people who make me feel insecure. And Yuri makes me feel insecure yesterday. But the way you put it, it sounds like she's learned her lesson. Well, I would say so. But even if her writing style is really different, I'm sure she'll appreciate the message in your poem. What I do best, after all, I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. Like, conveying emotions is important, but I want to make people think, just not feel. Not just feel. Remember that. I'm going to write a good one for tomorrow, too, so look forward to it. I have now been able to tell uh, both people behind Unbeatable Squirrel Girl that I named myself after Doreen Green from Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. So, that's a life goal scratched off the list. Got some water now. All right, back at. I guess you're you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You do, you don't want to get closer with everyone else? Wait, of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me, and I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. This is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life. But sometimes it's just easier to write when thinking about you, Sayori. No, Dory, I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori? I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori, I probably said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. She shakes her head, sniffles, and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. 
It's nothing, Dory. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry to see that. I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori. Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say everything, anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making. When the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface under a clean blue sky and expanse of bliss. But beneath great sailing clouds on endless enigma, the easiest uh, would... The easiest would to get lost in, the easiest world to get lost in, is one where everything can be found. Uh, one can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet, but when the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in, or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same, yet we still build our sand castles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, where my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic, the breeze is gentle yet powerful. I, I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foamy tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace to uh, exhale at the shore. Drift forward and I return to Earth forevermore. I guess you're, you're the one who likes this one the most. Why? You, do, you don't want to get closer with everyone else? Wait, of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress them. I still understand you the most, Sayori. I know you have to sometimes put up with me, and I have to sometimes put up with you, but we have a wavelength or something. This is how the poem came out. Sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life, but sometimes it's just easier to write when thinking about you. Sayori? N no Dory. I don't deserve this. You're too nice to me. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori? I glance around and make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori, I probably ne said this before, but I don't understand what you're feeling right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. She shakes her head, sniffles, and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Dory. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry to see that. I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm going to go home a little bit early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say everything, anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. A lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders Earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Lost adrift the sky, the victims of the currents of the mind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. When all has, has failed me... When all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the tw twilight twilight sky. I think that says twilight sky. Uh, Twilight, maybe. Anyway, until one day the mind ceases to to the mind ceases to blow. I fall and I fall and I fall and fall even more, gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to every uh, amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend, your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust, a gust of wind. I decided to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her, I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we made it a habit of simply entering each other's house like we're family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange for her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Dori. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Ah, uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. Uh, that doesn't seem like a messy room. I mean, there's a wad of paper on the floor, and some clothes out of place, and like, I guess you could move that plushie, but like, that's really nitpicking. 
I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years. Heh. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? They already had left... Yeah, we already know that. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations. Oh, uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course. But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Dory. Huh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. You just wants to torture me. Heh. <laughs> Sayori. I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Dory. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about? You're really just going to make me say it, aren't you? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Oh man, I relate to this a lot. Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy, without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Siori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Huh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. That's a good friend right there. Even if there's only so much that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Dory. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Something, seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, but I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, th there's nothing, nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was, but I was selfish. I fi finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down her face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish, and I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Dory. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Dory. Sayori isn't hugging me back, despite my arms being wrapped around her. Her r arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No, don't do this to me. Please don't do this. Dory. I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. If there's anything you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. 
Gently, Sayori, uh, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Dory. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain, but your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Sayori lets me go, and as she does, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, uh, it's what I want. I promise. I think that would be nice then. Yeah. She wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel? No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for you to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, she shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Ah. It's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. I said goodbye and exited her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri's about to come over, too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. All right. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminish your wonder over the years, but today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams, and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail, and remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way that you had thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your only escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. I think that's her best poem. Um, all right, uh, so I mean, like, I like Yuri a lot, but, um, I think, I like Monica, she has kind of like an abstract freeform thing that I really like, and also, like, she's really confident, and she's also the class president. I also just think I like her design the most, so I'll go with Monica, but Yuri's a close second, and Sayori's not far, far behind, and then Natsuki's, like, way down there. <laughs> No interest in Natsuki. Well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. Yeah, you picked me. Hold on one second. Y yeah. Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us. Eh? But I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your week already most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. But Dory was the one who... Ah. Uh, it doesn't matter. You're the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? Whatever you were saying, Yuri. In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones with ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do, you know. We won't do as good of a job if you make us work alone. Ah, uh, maybe, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. If you want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um, ah... Uh, so you're going to do the right thing, President? Okay, okay, I get it. Sigh. It's technically most logical for Dory to help one of you two, so I guess that's what we'll do. Well, I'll probably be most useful helping out Yuri. M me Are you serious? Why would you... Natsuki, I can already tell you're about to say something mean. N no I was just saying. Ugh. So you'll be helping Yuri then, Dory? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things, so I think your assistance will be very useful. That's great to hear. See, and Natsuki's already very, like, solid in her baking skills, so don't need to wear cheeks. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Dory. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish the cutting the ribbons. Ah, uh, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw 
a different character on each paper doing my best to manage my ba bad handwriting. Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Huh? The knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently thin blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh, well, embarrassed Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. Free throne, you know? If you promise you won't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. All right. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I, I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe? Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. Ha, you're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. It suits me. Yeah, it's kind of intense. Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Check, 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 check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow! Dory! Why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp, but it can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah. She stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah. Without warning, Yuri puts my fingers in her mouth and licks the wound. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Ooh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sure, it was a little weird and took me by surprise, but I guess she was trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, she doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover for this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing too, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. Dory, did you really just do that? N now or even? Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. Ha, <laughs> I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Dory. Yuri giggles shyly. Huh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Ah, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. They would have to make a new background. The tension is quickly lifted. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with towel. Aha. Uh -huh. Is something wrong? It's hot, I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Huh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah. Keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads into her books. Almost as if she's lost into a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. Uh, she breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist sent a tingling sensation through my arm, and suddenly her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah. Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry, I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. I it's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again. But her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly, hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow? Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted, because we can do this again. Whenever you want. You can come over, or we can go out somewhere. Uh, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply uh, smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm tr trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Dory. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori! Hi, Dory. <laughs> just now, we weren't... <laughs> it's okay, Dory. I just stopped by to say hi. Um... Well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course. The Ori beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri here. He's off. 
Sayori waves goodbye after her. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me, so I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri, and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy. They made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down her face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Dory? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Oh boy. Dory, don't say that. It's true, Dory. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. But even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm not going to... I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. That's a little... That's a little unrealistic. Everybody feels pain, but whatever. But, but... Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Dory. I'm really scared. What are you scared of? I'm scared that that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori? It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Dory, I like you so much that I want to die! That's how I feel, and and that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anyone anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. See, again, this would be a great pl Not again, but this would be a great place for polyamory. I'm just saying. All right, a little a little bit of a complicated situation for uh, teenagers? I guess they're all seniors in high school, or the equivalent. You remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, she nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now, and that's what I'm going to give it to you. Oh, boy. Um... I I feel bad for Sayori that she's going through these emotions. But I gotta be real, I think she's better off as a friend. I also think she's going through a lot right now and being in a relationship with her probably wouldn't be a good idea. I also just am more into Yuri and Monica than I am her. So, it just doesn't feel genuine to say I love you. What you need most is for things to be like they've always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seen after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help get things back to the way they were. I see. She forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. Is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? I should write a poem about this. Sayori? It's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there would be no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing, you're also right that I just wanted to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So, her smile breaks. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. Uh, she screams, ah! Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Uh, she flashes me a smile over her shoulder and then runs away. Sayori! And left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? Nothing more that I could have done. The most I can do is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts will continue plaguing me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give it everything I've got. Sayori will always be my dearest friend, and I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. I just... For me, and like, I struggle with depression too, like, and serious depression at, at times. And, um, I really feel like someone who is seriously going through it like that just isn't in a great place to have a romantic intense relationship that's my like personal opinion i'm not saying that they couldn't or that you could never have anyone who deals with mental health struggles right but someone who's having like seriously intense like mental health struggles 
you probably shouldn't be having like a romantic relationship because that's a really heavy emotional commitment for people who are mentally stable, let alone people who are heavily mentally unstable. So that's just my opinion, obviously. Take it with a grain of salt, but uh, as someone who's dealt with mental illness and been around a lot of people who have mental illness, you know. I was wandering an abandoned warehouse at night. I was lost looking for an exit. I just wanted to go home. I came upon a huge empty room with ceiling and walls beyond the deep blackness. My steps were quick in order to hurry to the other side or to a wall, anything. Suddenly the ground was no longer beneath my feet. I stepped into a hole of indeterminate width. I fell for a good five seconds before crashing into warm water. Figuring out which way was up, I surfaced myself. The air was humid, and the sounds of my splashing reverberated endlessly. My vision was completely swallowed by the dark. With one hand, I could feel the damp metal wall of the container. My lungs were already getting tired. It's different from the one she practiced. It's the one that I haven't read before. Or it's one that I haven't read before. Uh, it's a lot of get out of my head. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Ah, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Dory? What's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Sayori's written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I I'm going to go get Sayori, so... Ah, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake her up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes me really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they've always been. That's all she needs and what I want to give to her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone. Like yesterday, I open my, the door and let myself in. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. This isn't going to be good. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more something like a boyfriend would do? In any case, this feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Oh yeah, there it is. And there it is. What the hell? What what the hell? Is this a nightmare? It, it has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppress the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori would be there for her. I told her I knew what's best and whatever, and that everything would be okay. Then why, why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession, that has to be what pushed her over the edge. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Look, I'm not going to tell her that I love her if I don't love her. Like, I mean, it, it wasn't clear, like, if you could say I love you, like, platonically, that would be great. But the options didn't seem to be that good in terms of, like, being clear. Like, it was clearly either romance or platonic stuff. Not, like, I love you platonically or I love you romantically. Anyway. Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swearing thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent. I'll just spend more time with... If I spent more time with her or walked her to school and gave her what I know she wanted most out of a relationship, then I could have prevented this. I knew I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I can do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. Never. Never, 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 never. Oh, well, that was the end of that. So I guess I have to tell her I love her. Well, that's, that's kind of shitty. She killed herself. Yeah, it's a fun game. I was wandering... An abandoned warehouse at night. I was lost looking for an exit. I just wanted to go home. I came upon a huge empty room with ceiling and walls beyond the deep blackness. My steps were quick in order to hurry to the other side or to a wall, anything. Suddenly the ground was no longer beneath my feet. I stepped into a hole of indeterminate width. 
I fell for a good five seconds before crashing into warm water. Figuring out which way was up, I surfaced myself. The air was humid, and the sounds of my splashing reverberated endlessly. My vision was completely swallowed by the dark. With one hand, I could feel the damp metal wall of the container. My lungs were already getting tired. Uh oh. Oh boy. What are you doing? I'm just playing a cute little, uh, cute little game. Doki Doki. Very cute. Definitely nothing sinister going on here. No murder. Nothing. Totally normal stuff. And... hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's me. Um, so, you know how I've been, like, practicing piano and stuff? Yeah. And not really any good at it yet, like, at all. Right, of course. But, I wrote you a song. Oh, well, that's nice. And I was kind of hoping that I could show it to you. Yeah, sure. I worked really, really hard on it. Of course. Yeah, you know, I appreciate that. Yeah. You just rhymed you and you, Monica. Come on. Being close down into the dark puddle. Just move your hand right the way into his heart. But in this world of infinite choices, what will it take just to find that special day? What will it take just to find that special day? <laughs> nice. I hit the credits. I didn't expect to hit the credits. Nice. When you're here, everything that we do is fun for them anyway. When I can... Oh shit, Team Silvato! I just realized that that was the devs team! They fucking subscribed to me yesterday? Holy shit! What the fuck? They literally said, they joined the stream, said just Monica, subscribed to me, didn't elaborate, and then left. Wow. That's incredible. I thought that was one of my friends, Brian, but it wasn't. Because he said just Monica, and that sounded like his username. That's so cool that they followed me. Wow. That's neat. Wow, if I just had played another 10, 11 minutes, I would have gotten the credits. Oh well.
Aw, thanks, game. Wow, I really speed ran it, you know? Ten minute, nine, sub ten run. This is my final goodbye to the Literature Club. I finally understand. The Literature Club is truly a place where no happiness can be found. To the very end, I continue to expose innocent minds to a horrific, horrific reality. A reality that our world is not designed to comprehend. I can't let any of my friends undergo that same hellish epiphany. For the time it lasted, I want to thank you. For making all my dreams come true. For being a friend to all the club members. And most of all, thank you for being a part of my Literature Club. With everlasting love, Monica.